Hey guys, been a while since I've made a video. Not that I haven't been buying stuff, because I certainly have, but with the holidays and everything and just general busyness after the holidays, I just really haven't had a chance to make a video. So everything you're going to see today is actually three separate hauls from two different uh, comic book stores, both of which are local. One that just one that just opened and one that uh, I've been going to for a good while. Anyway, um, just put the gavin and get on with the get on to the comics. Picked up a copy of Flipper number three. This is the last issue in this series from Gold Key. Um, nothing really significant about it. It was just. Just a cool comic that I found in a 50 cent bin, so picked it up. Matter of fact, these next uh, several books you're going to see are from uh, 50 cent bins. Got this one. This is Night Force number one. I am 99% certain this is a duplicate that I ended up picking up, but it was a number one that was in really good shape. It's got a little spine tick right here, but other than that, it looks really nice, so... For 50 cent, I picked it up. Got Battle Classics number one. I like old um, war comics. This was one that uh, I've been kind of had my eye out for, for for a while, just to see if I could find a cheap copy, and I was lucky enough to find it in 50 cent bin. Got Southern Bastards number nine. Number 11, number 14, number 15, number 16, and number 17. I had actually picked up... Um, Copies of some of these at Heroes Con back in June, but these were variant covers. And anyway, for fifty cent, I picked them up. Uh, I did actually pick up a couple in there that I didn't have, so I'm very close to having all of the ones in this series. So that made me happy. Get these out of the way. Oh, and all of these so far came from. Heroes and Dragons in Columbia, South Carolina. Got Return of the New Gods, number 16. I've just been piecemealing this series together. Um, I like the, the concept that uh, Kirby came up with, with the New Gods. I think it's, well, I mean, we all know that he never got to complete the story. So... And these, this particular issue was after Kirby had left and gone back to, to Marvel. So DC kind of took free reign with it. But anyway, you still pick up some clues here and there as to maybe the direction that Kirby was going to go. Because even the guys who wrote these, wrote these stories for the comic after Kirby had left admit that they took some of the things that they had heard Kirby say that uh, he wanted to do. Now, whether the interpretation of it was exactly what Kirby would would have wanted or anticipated, I have no idea, but at least you maybe get some inkling of where he was going. Also picked up Nathaniel Dusk, Private Investigator. Uh, this was the second series, limited series they put out. This is Part two of Apple Peddler's Die at Noon. This is just a just a cool series that uh, was put out, set in the 1930s. Uh, P.I., of course, type book. Just really cool stuff. Uh, Gene Colan's art is fits this noirish type stuff really, really well. So picked it up just because the art's pretty cool and the story's pretty cool. Also picked up Mr. X number eight. This is the 
one of the issues from the original series. It's got a little mark right there. But anyway, uh, I've been trying to piece this series together too because this this series is just is is so strange and trying to figure out exactly what Dean Motter is trying to communicate it is fascinating to me. It's intriguing to me. So I've been picking these up and uh I think I've just about got all of them now. But I would pick up all of them just about out of 50 cent bins, dollar bins. So that's a good thing. All right, these next ones came from Galactic Comics in Florence, South Carolina. So, got Wallywood's Thunder Agents from Deluxe Comics number five. Tell a little short story about this one. I actually saw this book in the store and thought I had it. And because I didn't have my list with me, I know I'm old school. I should have had it on my phone. But I'm just one of these guys that still has yet to come into the 20th century and put the stuff on your phone. I'm going to get my son to help me with that. Anyway, I thought I had it because I had just read this story in an archives volume that I had picked up at a store uh, in Anderson, South Carolina. And anyway, I thought I had it, and then I got home and discovered that I didn't, so... I made a return trip specifically to get this book. Well, while I was there, I picked up a couple other things. But anyway, so I was very happy to get that. And I think that leaves me with one issue left, number three, which I could have gotten for a dollar, but at a uh, another comic shop a couple years back. But the guy had already picked it up and had it in his stack. So I wasn't going to beat him up and take it from him. But anyway, so I'm... Almost got them all. Pick this up. This is Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. This is actually came with a Tyco toy um, somewhere back, sometime back in the day. Um, apparently Tyco put out a series of toys that were based on this uh, Saturday morning cartoon. And this came with one of those toys. Pick that up. Got Tiger Girl, number one, from Gold Key. This was the one and only issue that was put out of this. This has been touted as being one of the most horrible comics that has ever been put out. It really stinks, from what I've heard. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Jack Sparling art that's in this. Um, just thought I'd pick it up just for the heck of it. I mean, these these actually came out of dollar boxes that uh, that Galactic had. So all of these were a dollar. Got this submarine attack number thirty five from Charlton, nineteen sixty two. It's actually not in too bad a shape. I think if this thing could be pressed. It would probably be a pretty solid mid-grade copy. And for a buck, you know, why not? This is the Flintstones from Gold Key, number 34. Just picked it up because, uh, I mean, why not? This was actually, this was a comic that was published during the time, I think, that the, that the, um, show was actually on the air. Um, I think it might have been right at the end, some of the la anyway, some of the last episodes. But anyway, just picked it up because it, it was the Flintstones and it had Gazoo in it. I have said before I like Christmas covers, so that's why I picked this one up. Well, there's a couple reasons why I picked this one up. But this is Life with Archie number six from January of 1961. It's an older Archie, which I always pick up anything before 1964. Before 1964, I usually try to pick up. Um, and, you know, I'll pick up some from the late 60s, too, just because of the fashions. But I like this one because I've never seen this one before. And it's got a Christmas cover on it. And it's got Archie and Veronica and Betty. So why not? 
pick this up. This is Classics Illustrated, number 26, with the 15 cent cover. Any of you who actually do collect these know that <laughs> trying to figure out the year that some of these were published is not easy. Um, I'm going to guess that this one was published in the mid, early to mid 50s, 1950s, because it's a 15 cent cover. It appears to be the second printing of this story because, you know, they would go back and they would restart the ones that they had published. This one has the latest one that was published on the very back page is number 51. So this has to be a very early adaptation of this one. Same thing with this next one. The le the, the biggest num the highest number published was number 70 on this one. So this one is again probably right around that same time period, early to mid 50s. Just picked them up because to be quite honest, the art in them is, is pretty good. It um, you know, it adapts stories that, you know, some you're familiar with, like Frankenstein, some that you would have to be a hardcore sci-fi or adventure to be familiar with, which I'm really truthfully not familiar with this one. The only reason I picked it up is because um, Alter Ego, I believe it was, featured this particular one because of the artist who drew it. Anyway, more modern stuff. Got a Marvel team up, number 88. Yeah, I say modern. This is from the early, late 70s, early 80s. Modern for me, anyway. But I picked this one up because it's Marvel team up, and I like these. Going back to some older ones. This is Popeye, number 46. No, not 15 bucks. This was in dollar bin. This is from the late 50s. It's just got um, really cool artwork in it and that uh, is very reminiscent of the Fleischer cartoons that came out in the 1930s. So picked it up as a, as a why not. Got Marge's Little Lulu. This is number 130 from 1959. Anyway, just picked it up because it was interesting. And uh, there's another reason I pick it up, which I'm not going to go into. But anyway, just a cool book to pick up. This is Showcase number 58. Yes, a remaindered copy and all of that. But it's got Enemy Ace in it. And like I said before, I like old war comics. So pick this one up. Got Dr. Solar number 10 from Gold Key from the six from the 1960s series. I have been trying very hard to get all of these. Um, just because I like the art and it's the, the these painted covers I think are just fantastic. I just like this old series. Um, it's kind of overlooked. Stories are good, the art's good. Um, it's just not your typical superhero book that a lot of people collect but anyway you can usually find them pretty cheap so i've been picking them up that two gun kid number 112 this is a reprint of an old of an older issue from i'm guessing the late 50s early 60s that jack kirby drew so i picked this one up just for that reason don't see these very often it's an old King Comics. This is Mandrake the Magician number two. Um, in all my years of collecting, I have actually seen very, very few King Comics. Very few. Um, at least in cheap boxes. But here lately, I've been lucky enough to be able to pick up a few issues of uh, Jungle Jim, this Mandrake. Um, I think they're maybe a Tarzan. Can't remember anyway. I picked it up. Picked it up at Heroes Con, so. Also in Dollar Box, got Invincible Iron Man number 59. Yes, in rough shape. 
It's in really rough shape. But for a buck, I can, you know, I'll buy it as a filler. And uh, when I get the chance to upgrade, I'll, I'll upgrade. This is Captain America number 173. I actually already have this one. The only reason I picked it up is because it is a very... It is, it has the X-Men in it, the original, the original team. And this, this issue came out just before issue number 94 of X-Men, where they introduced the new team with Colossus and, and, uh, Storm and Wolverine and all of that bunch. So pick this one up just because it was a appearance of the, uh, of the X Men. And I'll save this one for last. Got uh, Star Spangle Comics number 181. I like the um, Unknown Soldier. I may already have this one, but if I do, no big deal. Got the Lone Ranger number 128, June 59. Yes, Chip and all of that jazz, but for a dollar, I figured it'd be pretty cool to read it. Got Tarzan, number 124, Dale. I just like old Dale comics. Pick this one up. Uh, if you've ever seen this movie, I'm pretty sure this is a Ray Harryhausen movie with the stop motion uh, clay figures, Valley of Guanji from the late 60s. Just really cool dinosaurs and uh, cowboys and Indians movie. And lastly, True 3D number two from Harvey. I was very surprised to see this one in the dollar box. The bag, actually, the bag is more beat up than the comic is. This, this book came out in 1953, 1954, February of 1954. It has still got the two pairs of glasses in it. The two pairs of, of 3D glasses. The book is probably, I'm going to guess, a, a solid mid-grade, right around mid-grade. It's got a little mark here, a little fold here. And there's some other folds, but most of the stuff, most of the issues with this with this book could probably be pressed out or, you know, probably probably be fixed. Anyway, because it had the glasses in it and because it was an old Harvey comic before they went to, as you know, the Casper and the Wendy the Witch and hot stuff and all of that, I picked it up. Um, this was the second issue of, and it only lasted two issues. So I thought that was pretty cool, especially with the, uh, with the 3D specs still in it. Anyway, that is my haul. Um, I'm hoping to maybe make another trip to one of my local comic shops, uh, pretty soon. Uh, things have just been so busy. I haven't really had opportunity and that's why this video is actually late being filmed because all of these except for a few of them I actually picked up for the for the new year anyway thanks for watching uh, like comment subscribe and support your local comic shop see you next time